So this question provides some visual input here with this bar graph. So we know that we have multiple different energy sources um, and the consumption of those different energy sources is separated by the year, so either year 2000 or the year 2010. So let's see what the question says. So of the following, which best approximates the percent decrease in consumption of wood power? Okay, so we're only looking at wood. In the United States from 2000 to 2010. Well, if we're looking at wood, then for 2000, the number looks like it was at 2.25. But for 2010, the number looks like it is at 2. Right? So it looks like this question is just asking how, what's the percent decrease represented by going down from 2.25 to 2. So the best way to think about that, or one way to think about that, is let's let's actually try. So there's there's definitely a way that we've learned how to do this in school, but I'm going to use a strategy here. I'm going to use the strategy plug-in answers. Okay. So percent decrease just means you have a total or a whole amount, and then you're going to subtract a percent of the whole to get to your new number. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense in a very logical way. And again, there are some other ways to do this from school. There's multiple ways to do this. So if you know how to do those, that's great. Um, this video will be for people who don't necessarily immediately know how to do that. So we have all these answers here. So I can say, well, I know that in 2000 it was 2.25. So let's see if I were to subtract 6%, right? So choice A, 6% of 2.25, what would happen? So 6% of 2.25 is 2.25 times 0 0.06. Anytime we're multiplying by a percentage, we turn it into its decimal form. So we go to my, you go to your calculator and type in 2.25 times 0 0.06, and that becomes... 0 0.135, so I'd have 2.25 minus that, and that does not equal 2, so we know that our percentage has to be, or our percent decrease has to be bigger than 6, which is obvious given the other options here, but, you know, we also know that it cannot be A, which is very useful for us. Um, so let's try another one, right? So I'm going to just, for space, I'm going to get rid of the 0.6 here, get rid of this, what if I were to try choice B, which says, you know, times 11%, so 0 0.11. Let's see what happens with that. 2.25 times 0.11 is 0.2475, which I'd say for our purposes can be rounded to 0.25. And we would say that we would see that 2.25 minus 0.25 actually does equal to, and even if we hadn't rounded it, right, it'd be very, very close to that too. So we like B, and we like it even more when we see the remaining possibilities, which are a lot higher than 11%, right? There's no way, even with the rounding here that I did, there's no way that 11% will get us this close, and I can just tell you what that number is, so 2.25 minus 2 point, I'm sorry, minus 0.2475 is 2.0025, right? So very, very close to 2. So if 11% decrease got us that, that close to 2, 21% is going to be way too big. 26% is way too big. So our best answer here is choice B.